First, I want to thank you for chatting with me and congratulate you on the new season. I tore right through it. Uh, and then I'm going to start with you. And uh, please help me if I get your name wrong. Uh, my tray. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Uh, my tray. Um, what I love about this season is it shows this journey with uh, Davy, where she's um, really coming into her own, making some of her own decisions, and they're not always great. She's had mm -hmm. some love and loss, and uh, she is imperfect, um, but also striving to be a perfectionist. And um, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about the kind of importance in showing this young woman who is struggling with just coming of age. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in society, there is a lot of pressure on women to be perfect and not mess up because reality is there is an expectation and there is less room for error when you are trying to make it in whatever you want to make it in, whatever field that may be. Now, specifically, especially for women of color, that is only more intensified. Mm -hmm. So it is really important to see a woman of color mess up and mess up real bad and really loud and really publicly because it makes me and many people watching of all different you know backgrounds and ethnicities and identities feel like it's okay for them to mess up too because it really is we're all human we've all had diarrhea at one point so Dang. i mean hey cut yourself some slack <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Well, Darren, I don't mean to throw to you after that, but I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like uh, Paxton's story this uh, season because, you know, he's kind of been pigeonholed as like the hot, popular, but maybe not so bright guy. And then we're learning that he's also multifaceted and he can be all of those things. So I wonder if you talk a little bit about uh, taking that journey with Paxton. Yeah, it's been really rewarding. Um, it's something I say a lot. Like, I don't know if that was really the intention with his character um, from season one. I think there was somewhat more of an intention for him to be a not as multidimensional character. Um, so having that free reign to kind of run with that and show vulnerable sides to him and show parts of him that you would never think he would have because you think he's this dumb jock or, or whatnot. Um, I think it also gets into identity, you know, like there are, I think there's an expectation with a lot of men, especially ones who play sports or whatever, to just have this masculine facade at all times and not to show this side or that side of them. Um, so him coming into his own and, 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 and you know, letting that go um, with the help of Davey a lot of the time has been really important to me and uh, it's been a lot of fun and I hope it um, reaches young adults and males you know in, in that in that same uh, realm to do the same. And Jaren, one thing I really love about um, your relationship with Davey or Ben's relationship with Davey is that no matter if you're friends or if it's romance or if you're on or off or fighting uh, ben always has her back. And I, I think we don't get to see that very often in uh, high school shows or films about high school uh, where it's outside of the romantic context. There's uh, there's still like support for this person. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about that dynamic in your relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's really special to be able to portray that because it is so relatable and representative of real life. Because I think that like, if you have a strong foundation with anybody and that person is special to you, then you're going to care for them and you're going to be there for them no matter what they're going through or no matter what kind of ups and downs that you have, that shows that you guys are really true friends. And I think that underneath all of Ben and Davies, like, you know, hardships and ups and downs and whatever else they may get up to, there is so much care and honesty and kindness at the front of their relationship. And I think that that really kind of drives a lot of Ben's actions and they help each other. They help each other through difficult times. And it's really great, especially for Ben, who doesn't have very many people there for him to have someone like Davey, who is always there, even when maybe he doesn't want her to be. I think that I'm really happy, at least that she is in his life. It was a big one for Mama Vishwa Kumar, uh, really coming into supporting Devi and uh, accepting her in all of her kind of teenage messiness and glory. And I wonder if you talk a little bit about that journey to um, letting go a little bit and oh, yeah. what that means in the larger kind of 
uh, world. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I've been, I've, I often think this season is about bringing <laughs> people closer to her um, and forming more intimate relationships in order to get ready to let them go. You know, and I, and I, and I think like when Kamala comes in and says, you are passing a huge opportunity by not invest, you know, letting baby go, it really resonates with her on, she, she's, she's holding on, she's holding people so close. She's so, she's so scared of letting them go. You know, yeah. she's, she's alone. Yeah. And um, kind of really, really the season we see her have the courage to step up and um, bring someone close and then, um, you know, move them. Basically, a mom's journey is to kind of deliver their kid into adulthood. And we see Nelly kind of start mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. And uh, Richa, um, I'm with LGBTQ plus media and I find it interesting. I know it's not quite the same, but I think there's something so interesting in Kamala's journey of being allowed to choose right. her, her partner and who she wants to love. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about why that's an important story to tell um, in, in this context and then kind of generally. Well, it's a very important story to tell because <laughs> you know, in our culture and, and many other cultures as well, um, the family, off, well, first of all, there's the whole issue of uh, forced arranged marriages where there's no agency whatsoever and, and the couple has no say in it. And yeah. many of us have parents or or even to this day, people are still in that situation. And um, it's it's a horrible situation. Uh, well, it does, sorry, I shouldn't say it's horrible. It doesn't always end horribly, but um, I do think it's important for, for the individuals to have that agency. Um, so I will say that it is just so wonderful that our show has shined a light on a different aspect of arranged marriage and and but also shown how this pressure has affected my character, how how it has affected Kamala and and um, you know, for her to be able to follow her own heart and to do what she wants is her biggest challenge. Um, and and in order to get her family's acceptance it's it's difficult for her because she wants to make her family happy she wants everyone around her to be happy but at the same time that might mean that she has to sacrifice her own happiness and i think so many people can relate to that and um it's it's wonderful to see how much she's grown since season one and starting to stand up for herself in that situation mm -hmm. great thank you for that and Corna, uh, i just wanted to ask a little bit about um this is such a an important series if there's yeah, you know, it tackles grief and uh, you know loss of love and all these things, but it's ultimately featuring so many uh, people of color, people whose stories have not been told yeah. uh, in the past, and it's doing it with a lot of joy. And yes. I wish you would speak to that. I mean, I, I I couldn't have said it better than you. It is. Um... First of all, diversity is not paid any lip service to. You know, when we read scripts and they've introduced new characters, my mind is programmed to envision those characters as white. It's just is just who I who I've grown up to be. And then they come into the room and they're not white. You know, yeah. um, the so the true. the the diversity is like unflinching here. And it just um, in terms of not only race but you know sexual orientation and just you know there's 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 so many characters that I have. Um, uh, just, just pushed against all boundaries. And the show is just such a shining example for how everything not only works, but becomes even more brilliant and joyous when, when you bring uh, that to the table and that into a cast. Wonderful. And that behind, it's, 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 you know, the diversity is reflected on both sides. Behind and in front of the camera. It is amazing. I want to start with you, Ramona. Um, I am... Um... I really love Eleanor's relationship with Trent. Uh, she's very much in charge, um, but also in this very abiding kind of way. There's a lot of love there. And um, I don't think we get to see that kind of relationship in a high mm -hmm. school story very often. And I wonder if you talk a little bit about the dynamics between them. Yeah, I think Trent and Eleanor are both very strong individuals. They both have very strong characteristics and sometimes they can be polar opposites. But I think that's what fascinates Eleanor about Trent is that he's just so weird and crazy. And for some reason, when they're together, they're just so funny and sweet. Yeah, I, I love their dynamic. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 
Lee and Megan, I'm, I can't lie. I was really pulling for Fabiola and Anissa to work out. <laughs> I was really pulling for that one. Um, however, I do think there's a really great story that's being told here. And I, especially I'm with LGBTQ plus media. I think for a lot of queer women, there's confusion between friendship and romance. And so I think that's an important story. And I wonder, uh, I'll go to you firstly. I wonder if you would talk about uh, you know, the importance of telling a story where not every kind of love has to be romantic. It can just be friendship. I mean, I'm pretty sure most of us have been there where it's like, you know, you, you know, you start off as friends and then you kind of, the, the lines kind of get blurred and you give it a try. And yeah. sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. But as long as, you know, you guys can remain friends, I think that's always a great a great ending uh, to it or a continuation of the relationship. Um, and so, although, yeah, I, I would, trust me, I was pulling for Meet Saviola and Anissa. I was too. so pulling, but I get it. I understand yeah. it happens. So. Right, right, exactly. And and Megan, how about for you? Um, what's it like, not only just to tell this story, but I, I thought it was great that we found that out that um, Anissa is a queer woman. And um, also that's kind of really giving some representation to, I don't know if she identifies as bi or pan or however, uh, but that gives representation to, a, you know, a queer woman of color that we haven't seen very often. So what does that mean to you to play that? First and foremost, it's such an honor. And I'm, I'm so, so, so excited that we get to explore that for that exact reason, because we don't see much representation in that category. So um, I'm, I'm super stoked about that. And I think as far as like Fabiola and, and Anissa's storyline goes, I too was pulling, but I also am agreeing to it makes total sense. And I, I love that. I really, and I think the, the, the basis or like the lesson to be taken away from that is like, you can end a relationship cordially if you have that clear communication and it's coming from a place of genuinity. And I think that like Anissa knew in that moment that like, listen, I can, you know, she just knew and she's intuitive about her friends and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really genuinely happy with how the entire storyline panned out. And I think it's beautiful to see where Fabiola goes and to see how Anissa ultimately um, is still kind of figuring out who she is and as she moves along her own journey. I feel like Fab and Anissa totally like handled things so maturely. I think it's because I'm not trying to like toot our own horns, but I feel like Anissa and Fabiola are like the most mature ones out of like mm -hmm. the group. I love Eleanor, <laughs> love Baby, yeah. love my girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would agree. Um, well, I wonder too, um, this show is such a great uh, story, story of uh, female friendship and supporting one another. Um, and I wonder, uh, Ramona, if you would talk a little bit about the importance of showing these young women supporting one another rather than tearing each other down, which we so often get to see in um, television shows and film. Yeah, I think it's super important to find those friendships amongst other women who you can trust because I relate to women in a way that I can't really relate the same to men. So like I have problems that I go through that I really wish sometimes that these awesome girls can hear me out and be a friend for and understand me in a way that's unique and different. 